Perfect. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. Pat and I are here today again and excited to bring to you uh, another awesome feature of the Code Signal platform. Pat, I'll let you take it away. Hey folks, so happy to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be looking at another user interface task. This one's going to be a little bit different though because it's going to have some more dynamic elements to it. So before we dive in, just uh, to sort of reintroduce what we're looking at, we're here again within the code signal pair programming environment. Uh, so everything you see on the screen is part of that, uh, including the webcams and microphone setup that we have here, mainly set up for the purpose of, uh, of interviews. But of course, what we're here to talk about is how we can sort of measure developer skills in an automated way so that you don't have to be here. Uh, so basically, we've got our main IDE window over here where we're going to type out some code. Uh, like this nice comment at the top here that Tigran supplied for us. Uh, <laughs> we've got a console window down here. We're going to see some stuff uh, pretty soon after we actually load up a task. <clears throat> and we'll see a description over here as well. So we might as well go ahead and select a task for now. So the one we're going to work on today is this one, React Book Management. I'm really excited about this one. And by the way, just uh, I'll point out again, just a nice little quality of life feature is this favorites in case you have some nice favorite tasks that you like to give as interview problems. So we'll confirm that. And now that's going to load up. We see quite a bit of stuff on our screen that's changed. So we've got some code that's already written right now. Uh, we've got the description of our task on the left over here. And we've got this nice little preview window that's sort of showing us the current state of what we've got. So I guess the first thing that's different from what we saw last time is, uh, well, actually, sir, these two are the same. So we still have an HTML file, which is mostly filled out for us. We have a CSS file, which again, we can use SAS or traditional CSS, it's up to you. Uh, and this is mostly filled out as well. We've got you know some nice Flexbox stuff happening. But what's new is this tab over here, the JSX. So for anyone unfamiliar, that's something that's uh, related to React, which is a popular front end library. It's you can think of it as kind of like a mix between JavaScript and HTML. But the point is, this is going to give us some dynamic functionality to the thing that we're building on the left side over here. So you might recall last time we basically just updated the CSS. Uh, updated the HTML, and it would just update immediately in the preview window. In this case, we're going to make use of the preview button down here for any time that we want to make updates to the JavaScript, because that could be a little dangerous otherwise if we were just having this update when we weren't done you know, writing uh, our code fully. It, it could lead to some undesirable situations, so that's a nice security measure. Um, so specifically what we want to do today is we've got this, we're, we're trying to manage books, right? So we want to be able to type in a book name over here and then we want to click add book and have it kind of update over here. And then if we make a mistake, we want to be able to delete it. But something we're maybe noticing is that neither of those are doing anything right now. Uh, so basically we could take a look at this, I guess. We might as well also just go ahead and run the test. I mean, we've, we've got this tempting message over here. It says run test to see the output. So we might as well go ahead and do that. We'll talk a yeah. little more. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, we'll talk a little more about what's actually happening here uh, pretty soon. But basically, this is just used to, to sort of check if if we've done the task, right? This is for if we're not here, if we don't have um, an interviewer on site sort of thing, this is going to automate the process. Yeah. As you said it, it's right now we're in the interview solution, which, uh, you know, to make sure we have this kind of pair programming feature where both of us can code and have this video call down here. But uh, the really cool part about this is that it can be done uh, in the testing solution where it's completely checked automatically. So like as you're running the test, we're seeing that you're able to automatically verify the correctness of this. And I think uh, the other piece of this is that the reason there is so much pre-existing code in there, I think like one good way to think about this is that it's targeted assessments. So instead of asking someone to implement this whole thing from scratch, which would take a lot of time and not really target a specific area we're trying to measure, this specific assessment is designed to measure your ability to write React code, not HTML, not CSS, specifically to write React code. So the boilerplate code kind of helps target the assessment to that area, as well as saves time so that if you're a candidate going through an assessment process, you don't have to spend an hour 
just to light up that boilerplate, which doesn't really matter. What matters is to finish the code. Yeah, well said. So we're basically just sort of isolating the the React muscle, so to speak, in this case, yeah. getting rid of any yeah. sort of potential noise, right? Mm -hmm. um, so basically, if you're familiar with React, I mean, the main thing happens in the, the render method over here. This is where most of the stuff is being generated. Um, and so we might look to that to sort of get a sense of like why this is not working. And, and I mean, we have pretty good evidence that this is not working with this 3.23% over here. Again, we'll explore this in more detail pretty soon. Uh, but the main thing is that uh, that's not great. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, by the way, you'll notice I was able to move this thing around. I figured we want to focus on the code over here. We've read the description already, so we're not really using this real estate on the screen. So again, that's a nice little feature. Uh, okay, so something we're noticing is that when we click on the add book button, it's trying to make use of this add book method. But if we actually look at the class over here, it doesn't seem to have an add book method. And we could say the same thing about uh, the delete method. If we look at our, our render items for each of our items here, we should have this delete book method. So basically, uh, this, this is part of the reason I really like this task that it's not just like a recovery task where it says like, you know, fill in this part, dot, dot, dot. Uh, you kind of have to reverse engineer it. You kind of have to go through and understand like, well, well, wait, what's this delete book thing? What's that all about, right? So now that we've done that, we sort of see these methods. We have an understanding that these are the things that we want to implement. So we'll have delete book as one of our methods and we'll have add book as another one of these things. And basically the idea is that we just want to implement these so that stuff happens when we actually click the buttons here. Uh, just to sort of demonstrate what I mean, for add book, we could just say uh, something like alert. Uh, hey, just to test it out, right? See if it's working. Again, I'll have to do the preview, right? This is not doing anything right now. If I hit preview, now it's basically re-rendering this stuff as just an iframe. It's taking our code here and it's rendering it. So now if I hit add book, actually it still didn't do the alert. That might be just <laughs> not something we can do in here. I didn't think about that before. Uh, but anyway, the point is we could make it do some stuff. I guess we might as well make it do the actual thing that, uh, that we want it to do. So something to notice is that we have a state over here right uh, in particular our state has this current book name where is it getting that from well basically down here so we've got an on change listener happening in this window or in this field i should say so that when we make a change and the nice thing about the react on change is it, it reacts to everything like a, like a, a key press right if we change this thing at all it's basically going to take this value over here and it's going to set that as the state's current book name so that's really the thing we're trying to you know add to our records over here uh, the other thing is you'll notice where the records come from is is this.state.books, right? So we ha have this list over here. Basically right now it just has first book, uh, but we wanna be able to add other things to it. So we'll pay attention to the format, which is that, you know, this thing is uh, in the form of a JavaScript object. It has an ID, it has a name. So we wanna be consistent with that. So for add book, we'll do uh, a couple things here. We'll basically say constant new book is gonna be assigned the value of, um, well, okay, a couple things. Cause basically we want it to be an object, right? We want it to have an ID, which is gonna be something, I'll just say one for now. And then we want it to have a name as well. And the name is gonna be this dot state dot, what was it called, current book name? I think that was it. Uh, so this is the new book that we want to add here. I, I think we probably want to do something with the ID. In fact, right now I'll just make it like a, a random ID. So we'll just try to make sure that we won't have any collisions here. Uh, it's probably a good idea to make this something a little better, you know, where the ID has a little more meaning. Maybe it's incrementing from the previous ones. Uh, we have some options, but I figure we're probably safe just to make it something random over here. Uh, okay, so this is our new book and we actually want to get this into our book list. So I'm going to say const book list is going to be taken from the state as well. It's going to be this.state.books like we saw from the state up here. So it's just taking that array and then we want to update that array. So we basically want to say book list.push and then we'll take our new book and we'll put it in there. 
And then we need to update the state with that. So we'll say this.setState. For anyone familiar with React, that can be a bit of a gotcha that we don't want to modify it directly. We want to say this.setState in order to modify it. And that's actually a really important line to include uh, because even though we're modifying the book list, which is already in the state, it's not actually going to update the view unless we do a this.setState. So that's another React thing. Anyway, we'll do the preview. Okay. For one thing, it's not broken, right? <laughs> we can still see stuff here. Uh, we'll say, say test book, we'll try adding that. Ooh, and there we go. Okay, so uh, Tigran, I remember you mentioning something about uh, the spacing here bothering you. Any suggestions on what we could do about that? <laughs> yeah, so wait, uh, is the add book function, did you try adding one? Is it working for you? I'm gonna run it on my side and see if it's working on my side as well. Okay, great. Yeah. Another, uh, another yeah. Book. Let's see. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Uh, so, on the uh, what I'm curious about, while I kind of fixed the, the spacing on that side, sure. uh, how does testing work on this, right? Because last time when we looked at this, we only looked at uh, just HTML and CSS, and from there we talked about how it looks at the HTML DOM API and adjusts the sizes using Selenium, but like. This time it's dynamic, right? This time it actually has to check for, like, does it have the right functionality and behavior? Uh, what happens there? Yeah, that's a great point. So that's the nice thing about using Selenium is that it's not just doing like a pixel by pixel comparison or anything like that. It's actually rendering this stuff. So it has the capability to go in and test these things to, to sort of simulate a button press, to simulate uh, entering text mm -hmm. into the field. So when we run these tests, and actually, I, I guess we could run the tests again. Uh, it does take some time just because of the Selenium browser working in the background. And it's also sending this code off to the, a dedicated server known as a code runner. Uh, so basically, once we get this back, hopefully we should have passed more than 3.23% of the tests because mm -hmm. one of the things it will be doing is testing this add book function functionality. It wants to go in and uh, you know type in a little name here, click add book, and then check to see if it actually rendered a new element. Okay, so check it out. We're at 12.9% of the test. Oh. That's, uh, that's a lot better, right? So we were able to add two more books here. They're showing up. Uh, and, you know, it's specifying the names of them as well. I guess that's an important thing, right? We want to make sure that the name we put in here is actually the same as the name of the book that appears down here. So good thing that they're checking that. Right. We're not I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And I added the CSS on my end. If you flip over to the CSS tab and click preview, it should hopefully by now have at least a little bit of space on that side. Yeah. Just look at that. Elaborate on this. Uh, yeah, so nice addition there. It looks a lot cleaner. Um, so looking at the tests again, notice that like some of these are now not working. Well, I, I mean, still not working because we haven't implemented the deleting yet. So basically anything that has to do with deleting, uh, it's not really working out for us. So we probably want to implement that delete book function over mm -hmm. here. So let's go ahead and do that. I mean, basically it, it's going to be kind of similar to the previous one. I think it's probably going to be just a little bit simpler. Actually, we're going to get the book list from the state again. So this dot state dot books, I, I could just call this books, but I, I figure it's nice to sort of distinguish between them. Um, we could do something like const new book list is going to be assigned the value of book list dot whoops dot filter, you know, just to sort of take out the, the current element, right? Mm -hmm. um, so basically we could say something like uh, filter book, book is not equal to this, for example. And then it's basically creating a new array and we can say this dot set state and we'll say that books is new book list. So we're basically just like reassigning the array there. We'll update the preview, we'll see if that works. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Okay, so why is that? Well, it's because delete book should take in an actual book here. Uh, it's not the this that we should be using. It's the actual argument that we're giving it from delete book over here. Uh, right. So basically, each of our render items components over here uh, has that that capability that it's going to pass in the book itself. So uh, let's update the preview and we'll see if that works. So that's working now, although I probably should say we can make an improvement to this because it really wouldn't be a good idea if we're adding like, let's say we had a list of like a thousand books and every time we wanted to delete one, it's 
just making a whole new array in memory using this filter thing. That's not right. great. It's probably better for us to just say like book list dot splice, you know, something that's gonna naturally uh, take out a certain element here or however many elements we want. We'll just say the index of the current book and we'll say we wanna take out one of these things. And now we shouldn't have to do this and we'll just say update this thing with book list. Book list is in fact the array that we took from the state originally. So yeah, that's working and it's working a little nicer. In fact, uh, because there, there's a binding here between book list and the current array in the state, we actually don't even need to give the state anything new. Uh, it still works, even if we just say this dot set state with nothing else. Interesting to note that it won't work if we don't call set state, uh, or at least it's not gonna update the view. If I were to put something else in here, now it is updating the view, and we see that it actually did delete, but we need this set state to actually just update the view to make it feel, I mean, it's better for user experience that way, right? So that the user can actually see what they're doing. Okay, so this should work now. Is yep. it working? Let's find I just, out. I definitely working. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, working on my end too. We'll go to run the test, we'll see what happens, and uh, hopefully everyone will be very happy. Uh, anything else we should talk about while we're waiting for these to, to check? No, I think this covers it all. Uh, I think next week, next Wednesday, I think we should switch gears a little bit and maybe talk about uh, database skills, so like database administration skills, uh, specifically for relational databases, and then we can, the weeks after, maybe we can cover more uh, other types of databases, such as uh, NoSQL databases. So what Great. do you think? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Looking forward to it. And awesome. we want to do that at a different time, right? Next time we'll not come uh, live so early so that people get a chance to wake up and check out the screen. Awesome, Chad. Well, thanks, thanks a lot for walking through this. This was really fun. And looks like you are passing 100% of the test. So great Feels good. job. Yeah, it was good for you. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you again soon. Bye for Bye. now.